my first ever Albo chop. Hey guys, it's up, it's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So I think we're gonna be doing a plant chores episode today. I haven't fully decided what I'm all gonna be doing, but I do know for sure we are going to be taking a look at how the air layering is progressing on the elbow here and possibly giving it the chop today. So I'm very excited. I've been anticipating doing this for quite a while now and I've never propagated Monstera Alba before. So yeah, big stuff happening for me today. I will show you an overview of what the plant is looking like. Okay, here we go. Don't mind my couch, that is Olive's nest there and the potting mix on the other side of the couch. Um, but yeah, this plant is about five feet tall right now. This is the newest leaf. It is quite large. As you can see, some of the leaves are facing this way because those leaves have chosen to face towards the window, whereas the rest of the plant is facing the other way because these leaves are facing the grow light and like moving towards the grow light. So yeah, it looks kind of crazy. It's facing all types of directions. So I started air layering it just over a month ago now, probably about five weeks ago. And it is just moss with a Ziploc bag around it. I did this in a video about five weeks ago, so I'll link that one down below if you haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, I can see some roots. There's more roots in some areas than others. Like right here, you can see quite a bit of roots in there. So. I'm very, very eager to take this off and see what we're working with and hopefully be able to chop today. I also think that I'm going to be doing two cuts. I think I'm going to chop somewhere around here and have this top cut separate and I'm just going to root that in water and then keep the mid cut here attached to the pole. So I'm just going to be removing the extension, adding a new base and starting a new plant. So my kettle just finished boiling so I'm going to make some tea and then um, we're gonna take that off and check it out. Okay, the moment of truth here. So I just kind of like taped it on. So I'm just gonna carefully undo everything here. You can see roots right there. I think I only really moistened the moss like twice throughout this whole process. So it's very low maintenance propagation method. Okay, oh my gosh, there's actually a lot of roots. <gasps> oh, I'm excited. I think we're for sure gonna be able to chop today. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh, it's so satisfying. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm making a mess. Okay, I'm just going to remove like the bulk of the moss. Oh wow, yeah, there's roots all the way around. And they all look really healthy. Like look at those nice, white, beautiful roots. I'll give you guys a close up in a sec here. Okay, so to show you guys up close what they're looking like, they look really, really good. I think I'm going to do the chop and attempt to disconnect this moss bowl extension before I kind of mess around with them anymore. So, um, yes, okay, <laughs> let's do that. I'm nervous. I don't want to mess this up. Okay, so I've got to look at the vine here and figure out where I need to chop. So, where are these roots? 
coming from? Right here, this aerial. Maybe I will remove more of the moss just so I can have a clearer picture of what I'm working with when it comes to where I'm chopping and everything. Oh my goodness, there's even more under, there's so many roots. Wow. Okay, where is the... Okay, so the extension connects right here. So I think where I need to cut is going to be right here. Okay, you guys, I am gonna do the chop. So I'm gonna be cutting right here. Um, and I'm busting out my big shears because this is a thick vine. However, I don't really know if I'm gonna be able to get them in there. Try. I can see this little root here. I don't wanna cut that one. Get out of there, buddy. Get out of there. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, my first ever elbow chop. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh wow, that worked really well. Okay, oh my goodness. It's officially chopped. It's officially chopped. Okay, um, so now what I need to do is get the roots kind of off of this part. Do you see where the extension comes off? It's right here. So I need to remove, gently pull the roots off of this base moss pole here. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. I don't wanna break, some roots are inevitably probably gonna break, but I don't wanna break all of them obviously. So to be gentle. to disconnect right here, this big aerial root. This is the hardest part, is getting these big aerial roots off that have been on there for so long. I mean, I don't really care about this one if it breaks, but, oh, let's see if we can get it off. Ouch. There we go, I think it's free. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Okay. So this is what we're left with. This is what I just removed. And we are going to be chopping it one more time too. Oh my gosh, that actually worked. I'm kind of shook by this. That is so cool. So this is our little starter root system here. I'm only gonna have one, two, three leaves once I cut this top portion off, or maybe four. Depends where I cut, three or four leaves. So 
that's not bad. This root system should develop and grow and I think it'll be fine. Okay, so now I have to attach a base onto this moss pole. So I have a couple of different sizes. Um, I guess, I mean, I think, let's see. I think this one, well, actually the taller one might be a little bit better. Yeah, then that will give the root system some distance beneath to kind of expand. Um, and then maybe I'll go with the wider base just because this does tend to be a bit of a heavier plant. So I'm just going to connect that on. And that's it. I have a new plant. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's the coolest thing ever. Okay, we do have one more cut to do though, which I might as well do before I pot this up. So I have to decide where I'm gonna cut. I think I'm gonna see where I really like the variegation. I think if I cut right here, because look at this leaf and the variegation in the stem is really nice here. So I think I'm gonna cut just above that and then hopefully that will promote more variegation happening. So. Let's just do it. I'm on a roll now. Choppity chop. Oh, it's hard to get my clippers in this one. There we go. Okay. This one is in the moss a little bit too, so I'm just gonna have to kind of Pull it off. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> okay, maybe you can be more gentle than me. I did like strip a couple of these aerial roots. I'm just gonna snip them off though because, wait, is that one? Okay, I think that one's okay. This one looks unwell though. I'll just cut it down. Okay, so this is my cutting. Wow, look at all of this going on here. All of the aerials starting. I don't even know how I'm gonna root this. I literally have not even put any thought into it. Probably perlite or sphagnum. Uh, when I first got this plant, it came to me as a partially rooted cutting. It was in sphagnum moss. I remember I've never been so stressed in my life over a plant because this was back in like probably at the beginning of 2020 that I got this plant or maybe like mid like spring 2020. And um, I didn't have very many like rare plants yet. So I was just very, very stressed about something happening. Um, but obviously it was fine. Anyway, so that's my only experience really with rooting these is moss when I first got it. So I might go with that again, but I also really like perlite propagation and that seems to be successful for me. So I might go with that, but um, I'm just gonna set this off to the side for now while I pot the other one up. I can't believe I have three Monstera elbows now. Like, what am I doing? I kind of wanna just chop up the mother plant and just keep this one and grow it out or keep that one. I don't know. I don't know what I should do. We'll see, but I'm just gonna set this one off to the side for now. Okay, I have made such a big mess here. I don't know why I'm just busting out the potting mat now. I should have set it out at the beginning of the video and put all the sphagnum in it, but oh well. Okay, so I'm just gonna be using this clear orchid. Actually, is that gonna work? Yeah, I think that should work perfectly, actually. Let's see. debating switching to the shorter because the roots are very close to the top. I kind of want them to be covered a little bit more. So let's try. Oh. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. The roots are just kind of sitting kind of in the middle. 
Then I'm just gonna fill it up with potting mix. I'm obviously using this clear pot so that I can monitor the root growth. Like I said at the beginning, the leaves are kind of pointing all different directions on this plant. So I'm hoping that over time, these will kind of shift to be facing the same way. Um, but I'm really excited to see what the new leaves end up looking like on this. I'm hoping to get an increase in variegation, but we'll see what happens. Just filling this up with my potting mix. This is quite a big pot to be putting that small starter root system in, but since I feel like I'm experienced enough um, to know when is appropriate to water and I just know this plant well enough that I'm comfortable with it, but um, for a lot of people I would recommend going with a smaller pot. I think this will be fine though and then I'm not gonna have to worry about like repotting right away, so yeah, I'm happy with this size of pot. And again, it's clear, so I'll be able to see what's going on in there. Okay, so I think that is gonna be that for this guy. Look at this beautiful leaf, oh my goodness. Yeah, all I've gotta do is water it in and I'm gonna pop it where it's where the mother plant has been living already in front of my plant spectrum grow light and just keep an eye on it. I already have Osmocote and Myco, Dynamico in my potting mix. So um, yeah, I also have charcoal in here. I'm really happy with this potting mix that I recently made. It's got like all of the things. So yeah, it should be happy. Okay, so I put all three of the plants back here. Luckily, I was able to kind of squeeze them all in, but we have the mother plant here, which is just so crazy seeing her so small again. Um, and I do have an extension to add on to here once she continues to grow, but I'm not gonna add it on yet because it's just pointless. It's not needed yet. Um, so yeah, we'll see what the next new leaf from her is gonna look like. And then we have the top cut, which I think is the most beautiful um, of them all. There's three leaves. I'm gonna root it in sphagnum moss there. The other leaf is kind of, it's facing the wrong way, so it's kind of tucked behind there. But there's really not much I can do. I'm working with limited space here. And then we have the mid cut right here, which is gonna grow into that um, chunky potting mix down there and continue to grow up the pole as well. So I'm especially excited to see what the next leaf on that one. Actually, honestly, I'm excited to see what the next leaf on all of these are gonna look like. See what type of irrigation we're getting. Um, can't wait to update you guys. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep them in front of this plant spectrum light and I think that they'll do really well. My fingers are crossed.
Okay, hello. It has been a few days. Um, actually, it's been a little bit longer than that. I think it's been close to a week now. And I thought I was just gonna be filming for one or two days. I didn't think it was gonna span over this length of time. But since it has, I figured I would give y'all a little update on how my Monstera Albo is doing. Um, and I don't remember if I showed, like, I know I took a clip of me. I randomly decided to chop up my whole Monstera Dubia after I chopped the Albo. I'm in a very choppy mood lately. Can I just say that? Um, I think that we're gonna cut up another plant uh, to like end off this video after this too because I don't know I just I want to chop everything right now um, But I'm gonna show you an update on the Monstera Albo because I just looked at it earlier today and things are already happening So I'm just so thrilled about that um, And I also want to kind of adjust it a little bit. I'll we'll I'll sh show you and explain everything once we're looking at that and then I'll show you some of my dubia cuttings, and then I think I'm gonna chop my philodendron majestic because she has grown so out of control and I just kind of want to start her over and just like really just grow her nicely because I feel like she's just gone wild, which is fine, honestly, and she's been doing super well, but she deserves better than that. I really want to have her on like a proper pole and just, you know, I love her so much. It's honestly one of my favorite plants, so I don't want it to be like a neglected plant situation. Hello? A neglected plant situation. So I'm going to chop her and start her over again. And yeah, I guess this video is has just become like a fun little propagation moment. Um, even though it's not the time of year for it, that's okay. It's been sunny the past few days, which has been so nice. Uh, however, we are coming up to, I think like about a week, maybe even longer. I haven't looked that far ahead. I just saw that like all next week is rain. So I was like, oh, better enjoy it while it lasts. Anyways, okay, let me start off by showing you how the three, I can't believe I have three Monster Albos now. Um, but yes, let me show you how they're doing. Okay, so for the mother plant here, obviously not much has happened yet. It's gonna take some time for a growth point to activate. I am considering chopping up this whole plant and then just having like a bunch of babies that I can sell or whatever. Um, so I'm considering, oh shoot, oh my goodness, I almost knocked over one of the propagations. It really needs to be watered. I was just waiting for this video. Um, not really needs to be watered. It's not like super, super crispy, but the moss is definitely dry. Uh, anyways, yeah, I'm considering chopping up the mother, so I don't know, like, should I do it? I'm kind of nervous to, but I kind of want to, I don't know. I'm still deciding on that one, like, look at this leaf. I'm obsessed with it, that minty part. And then, of course, we have our top cut here, which I love so much. Like, this is just so, oops, there we go. This is just so, so pretty, like, these leaves are so big, oh my goodness. Um, so there isn't really, well actually, um, this definitely looks like it's growing. M remember I wrapped that aerial root around in there and it looks like it's possibly growing. You know, and you can tell that the tip kind of like looks fresh. Um, so I'm not really sure. We're not going to know what's going on in here until a little bit longer when I'll be able to see new root growth and whatnot. But the plant is doing fine. Um, like I said, I'm gonna water the moss, so I thought we would do that together in this video. I'm just gonna be using some Super Thrive to water it, and it's at the point where it's still like a little bit bouncy, it's not completely crispy, but it's quite dry. So that's kind of the point that I wait for to water my moss propagations. And then for this one, which is the one that I'm kind of like the most curious and excited about to see what's gonna happen here, because this is the one that we um, kept on the pole and kind of are starting over again on a pole. So obviously nothing going on with the growth point yet. We're going to be keeping our eye on that. However, um, I was looking at the roots earlier today and look at this, you guys. They are growing. Like, oh my goodness. I was so thrilled to see that. Like, oh my gosh. I mean, I knew I knew, or I was hoping, <laughs> I'm not going to say I knew because you never 100% know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just really happy to see it growing um, because I didn't start off with like a huge root system or anything. Uh, so yeah, I'm just like so, so stoked about this. I will say, and this is what, when I was saying I kind of wanted to like adjust this, um, you can see I should have maybe went with the smaller base for the moss pool because 
it's creating the way that this orchid pot is shaped. I should have either went with a different pot, maybe. Um, but the way that this orchid pot is shaped, it kind of comes up at the bottom. And um, with that moss pole base there, it's leaving a gap under here. And that's stressing me out a little bit. I don't know whether I need to be stressed about this, uh, like whether it's actually would cause a problem or whether it'd be fine, but it is stressing me. So I think I am going to, I might pull this out and add more potting mix to the bottom there. Like, I don't know, I don't know what else to do. Um, or like change the base to this, the smaller base, which I, ugh, I don't want to do because this is doing well and I don't want to have to disturb it already. But I know it's just going to stress me out and I'm worried that these roots are going to like dry out down here. So yeah, that was totally my fault. It was just not, I just should have thought about that more, but I didn't realize it. So oh, I think we're going to have to pull that out and just kind of adjust. But you know, it's doing really well. So that's what's important and I'm really happy about that. This has rooted faster than my Thai Constellation has rooted in that pot in that thing I repotted like three months ago. Um, and there's barely any roots. And this already has roots and I potted it a week ago. So like, what the heck? I'm actually considering you guys getting a new Thai Constellation. So let me know if you think I should because I'm so over this one. Like it's just not growing and I really want one. So, oh, I don't know. Let me know. I feel bad just giving up on it, but like, what the heck? Okay, so I'm just gonna try to do this like gently and quickly. And I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, I don't really have a game plan. I'm just going to... Um, okay, where's the roots? There. Okay, I'm just gonna gently... Oh my gosh, they're like already stuck. Oh, I'm pulling them off. Oh my gosh, I really cannot believe that it started rooting so quickly. Like, that is just crazy to me. Oh my gosh. Ugh. So annoying, what a mess I'm making. Oh shoot, okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna switch to a thinner base because I think that's pretty much gonna solve our problem. Um, because I think it's gonna match up with the raised part. It's gonna be about the same size as that. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, this part that raises up and that's creating like that pocket on the bottom. Um, let me go grab a smaller base and we'll switch it out. Good thing they gave me a couple of size options. Okay, yeah, this is gonna be so much better. My bad, my bad. Okay, let's get this. Off. Okay. So I'm gonna add some, oh my goodness, my finger's like cramped up. I'm gonna add some potting mix into here to cover the like pot, the part that like pockets down. <laughs> Words aren't wording for me today. Um, okay, I think that that is good. Now let's gently, oh my goodness, like look at those roots. Let's just get a close up while they're out here. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I am just like so thrilled about this. Should I put this aerial in here too? Maybe I should. I wanna make sure that the, there's no air pockets. Okay, perfect. Should I put this aerial in? I don't think I can bend it. I think it's gonna snap. Oh yeah, okay, never mind. That's fine. And I'm just gonna put the potting mix back in. Just a minor hiccup, but honestly, I don't think that that's really gonna affect our outcome here. This plant is doing really well. It's already got a decent root system on it from all of my earlier preparations. Also, I started air layering my philodendron splendid yesterday, so I'm so excited to be able to chop that um, because it's almost to the top of its moss pole too. Like I said, I'm just like chopping crazy right now. Oop, okay.
This potting mix also has um, my Myco mixed into it, pre-mixed into it too. So I wonder if that's helping like speed up the rooting process as well. more potting mix. I've just had this potting mix bin out for days just sitting in my living room because I've been doing so many plant things over the past week. I haven't been filming a lot because it's just been things like I've just been you know when you have so many things to do um, that are just like piling up and filming really slows me down and they were like emergent things like not emergent but urgent things. Um, I now have a mealybug outbreak like a full-on outbreak on my plant shelf. One of y'all actually left a comment on my last video um, spotting them and I was like, no way. And then, yeah, I found them on one of my Hoya and then I found them on like the whole top half of my plant shelf. So I've been treating those for like two days. Um, also found multiple new like spider mite breakouts, outbreaks too on different plants. Um, and I also have a fungal issue happening in my Mills Botol. Um, which is my fault because there's no air circulation happening in there right now. And I went to go like start up the fans again and my power, my like smart power bar thing doesn't work anymore. So now I need to get a new one of those. And it's just been a time. Um, I was also in the hospital with a family member, like accompanying them all last weekend. So it just like, there's been so many things going on and I've been like trying to catch up with all of these plant things. Um, so yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff, but it feels good to be like catching up and getting projects underway and everything. So yeah, okay, I think that's pretty good. I don't see any major air pockets or anything. It looks really good actually. So I am gonna bring this to the tub because we're gonna do some watering in there. Okay, so the mother plant actually doesn't need any water. I must have watered it a few days ago. Um, but it's still very moist, so we're just going to be watering both of the cuttings. Um, and all that I'm going to be using for them is just a couple of drops of Super Thrive, um, just to uh, reduce shock for one, and then um, also to speed up the rooting process. So actually, I'm going to do three drops in this watering can. It's pretty big. I'll fill it up all the way. Okay, so I'll start with our sphagnum cutting and I'm just gonna saturate it. This has lots of holes, so I'm not really too worried. There's a lot of airflow happening in here. Um, yep, yeah, so I'm just gonna saturate it, let it drain through. And then I think that we'll do the other one in the shower, or I could bring it out here. Yeah, okay, I'll bring it out here. All right, same thing. I think it was like just due for a watering too, so kind of perfect timing to do all of this. I'm just going to fill up the moss pole to keep it moist. Don't mind all of my dishes that need to be dried and put away, but I'm just gonna fill this up with water. Um, I need to water like the mother pole, pole, the mother plant pole as well. Oh my goodness, you guys. The nice thing about just propagating this plant like this is that it's already attached to the pole. So as soon as those new leaves start coming out, it's just going to continue to climb up, which is really nice. So it's just going to be like a brand new mother plant which is so, so cool. And like I said, I'm very curious to see what the variegation is gonna look like coming out of this region. Um, so yeah, I'm just like so excited to be able to give you guys updates on this little project. And I'm already feeling like my first Monstera Albo propagation is going to be successful. So yeah, I mean, we'll see about this one since I can't tell what's going on in there in the sphagnum, but I have a good feeling, so yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let that absorb for a while. There's normally like funnels um, that stay on here that some of my other ones have, but this one I'm just doing it. This is like the 
the lazy way that I do it if I don't have a funnel. It's nice though. They come with they come with funnels now that just like stay on the top and you can literally just like dump water in, which makes it super super time efficient. Like these ones on my Painted Lady and my Billy, they both have a funnel that just stays on top. By the way, look at them both putting out new leaves at once. Like, oh my goodness, go off. Looks like I'm getting another decent sized leaf on my Painted Lady again, which is nice too. Also, this new leaf coming in on my Gloriosum, I'm dying over it. I don't like that it keeps getting caught on this one though. Get out of the way, buddy. Oh, she's just gonna be stunning. There, that'll be better. Also, my Florida ghost is out here now. I know, I feel like I just did my updates video was my last one. Uh, it's been a week and just like so much has gone on. Um, but my philodendron Florida ghost is now living out here because um, the mealies were attacking it and, and attacking like all the other plants around this one. So I just am keeping her, it's been sunny out here so it's been bright enough. Once it starts raining, I'm probably gonna have to move her to the shelf and just monitor really closely. But I was honestly so mad to find mealies on this plant. I'm like, don't you dare go for my Florida ghost. Like I'm obsessed with this plant, she's perfection. Um, but I am really enjoying having her in my living room. Like just look at how pretty, oh my goodness. I wish this spot was bright enough to have her live there all the time. Um, but yeah, I can't stop staring at her. It's so nice to just like have her out in my living space, you know, to admire. Hello, monkey. <laughs> Look at, she makes a nest. I always put the blankets all nice on the couch and then this is how they end up. She literally moves everything over into her nest. Don't you, my queen. Okay, what were we doing? Oh yes, going to fill this one up with water now. Okay, the moss poles are moistened again and everybody is back in their spots. I am keeping a grow light quite close to these plants for now. Um, I have the propagation, the sphagnum moss propagation in the front just because I want to make sure it's getting a lot of light. And I'm also paying closer attention to the temperature in my bedroom. Normally I like to let it get like really cold in here at night when I'm sleeping. But I've been keeping the temperature pretty consistently around 21 degrees even though I'm like sweating in my sleep. I just don't want the rooting process to be hindered in any way and I know that temperature is really important for that so yeah that's basically what I'm doing and I think that is going pretty well. Somebody also commented once that like turning the temperature up and down all the time is actually using up more energy because it has to um like get the temperature back up to that warm temperature and that's like harder on the energy bill so do you know what I'm saying? So I don't know, that's kind of another reason I've been trying to keep it around like a steady temperature. Okay, so Miss Majestic coming in for her haircut. Oh my goodness, look at how beautiful. I cannot get over this newest leaf. It is just perfection. Um, yeah, I love this plant so much, but obviously she is way overgrown from her moss pole to the point where she's falling over. The whole pot tipped over the other day, scared the crap out of me. Um, and yeah, she's gonna break if I don't chop her. So, so that is what we are going to be doing. Um, I've got my little snippers here. Let me put her down for a sec. Ooh, and she's got a new leaf coming out already. Like they're, it's, they're just constant. And I've heard multiple people say that Philodendron Majestic grows slow, but that has not been my experience at all. Um, I feel like she's always working on a new leaf and she's not always in ideal conditions either. So. It's just very impressive to me how well she does. Okay, so let me decide where I'm gonna chop here. I didn't even notice before that at this node here, she has two leaves coming out of that one. She put out this small one because this was the first one after she was chopped before. And then she put out that one from the same one. So that's really cool. I guess I'm just gonna start with chopping under that one. Then I think I'm gonna do two leaves per cutting. Well, the top one will have this growth point. Um, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Oh my goodness, it's so low, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to show. My camera's just in a weird place today. Maybe I'll do this. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna chop right here. Oh my gosh, that was almost a really bad idea. I caught her though. Okay, so now I'm going to chop again right here. Wait, yeah, that's right, right here. So I have this cutting 
with those two leaves. And then I have this cutting with this beautiful big leaf and a new one on the way, which probably will come out a little bit stunted or just not as nice as it would have if I would have not chopped it, but what can you do? Okay, I'm gonna put those to the side. It smells so philodendron-y. Philodendrons smell like pine to me, like pine trees. Okay, I'm gonna set those there. And I'm gonna look at the rest of the plant. Part of me thinks I should just cut it all up, but then part of me is like, what are you gonna do? Like, where are you gonna put all the cuttings? So I might just leave this mother plant um, attached onto here and then figure out what my game plan is gonna be. But yeah, I'm going to start off the new cuttings. What am I gonna root them in? Probably just water, honestly, because I've never had any problems before rooting these in water. I actually have majestic cuttings that are rooted in water right now, so yeah. Oh my goodness, I've got a lot of these plants now. I want to peel this sheep off though before we put it into water. Literally smells like a Christmas tree. Okay, so this is where I ended up sticking the majestic cuttings. They're just in a jar of water and I decided to put them on this shelf because they'll be getting a lot of light um, and it really just like shows off how big these leaves are like compared to my other plants. Oh my goodness, it's just so, so pretty. I can't get over this plant. Um, so hopefully those will root up well. I'm sure that they will. And when I was sticking it there, I looked down and I saw my dubia cuttings and I was like, oh yeah, I totally forgot to do my dubia update. So I'm not really going to talk too much about these ones because I did just show them in my last video, I think, but they're still doing really well. A lot of roots on this one, um, some roots on this one, and I still don't think I can see any roots on this one. So I don't know whether this one is going to make it or not, but I've got lots now, so I'm not worried about it either way. Um, let's go check out the ones that I took the other day. Okay, so all the cuttings that I took the other day, the ones that I kept at least, um, for the smaller portion of the plant, I did just put that in the compost because I've already got so many cuttings of this plant and just like those small ones, I'm like, what am I gonna do with this? So I do have five, I think, um, cuttings with two leaves each. I figured I would do two leaf cuttings instead of the one leaf. Um, this way it'll kind of be big enough that I can just like hopefully push it up against the plank right away. I don't know why I just went with one leaf cuttings for the other one. I guess I wasn't really thinking about it, but this is how this works, you guys. You you learn as you go and you it's trial and error. You learn from your mistakes, you figure out what works and what doesn't. So I'm doing it both ways and we're gonna see what works. And also for these ones, I ended up putting them in perlite to root because, I don't know, I'm not 100% happy with how the sphagnum ones are rooting. Like, one of them is doing really well, but the other two aren't really. Like, they're fine, but I don't know. I, I'm always, like, partial to perlite anyways, so, um, yeah, these ones, like I said, it's only been, like, six or seven days, so I don't think there's really anything happening yet, but they look really good. And obviously I have them in the cabinet, so that should give them a boost with rooting and everything as well. So yeah, I'm not going to bother them too much, but it's literally just five sets of two leaves in perlite. And I'm probably going to be keeping one of these for myself to restart on the plank. I'm either going to put one or two plants. I'm not sure, because if they're this big, I don't know if I'll be able to fit two plants on the plank from the bottom up, but... Uh, definitely one of them I'll be putting on the plank. It's so weird just having that like naked piece of wood in my room now. Like it's just weird not having the dubia on it. This is definitely the downfall or the con of using a wooden plank rather than a moss pole because I can't just um, like do the chop and extend. Like I just have to start over from the biggest cutting and hope that it continues to size up, which I think it will. Like I'm already going to be at a better starting point than I was with like my baby plant. So um, I think that the leaves will continue to size up on the plank, but it, it would be better if I could just like chop the moss pole in half and do like an air layering like what I'm doing here. So I'm air layering and then I'm just going to be chopping and then it's going to stay on this moss pole, going to be repotted, and then it's just going to grow from here and we'll add a new moss pole onto it. Essentially what I just did with the Monstera Albo, that's the best way to do these things to um, retain the leaf size, but... Yeah, that's just not the case when you're working with a plank. 
I do really love growing on the plank though, at least for my Monstera dubia. I don't know if I would prefer a plank over moss poles for um, different types of plants, but it's definitely like really suitable for a shingler. So yeah, I can't wait to pot up the cuttings and then get it back on the plank. It's gonna be so cool to see it attach again and kind of like watch the whole process over again. Anyways, I guess that brings us to the end of this video. I hope that y'all like just hanging out with me and doing some of this propagation work. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. I would love to chat with you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.